Thank you, everyone, for coming to the Bosch Core Project Update Track. Woo! Not track, talk, sorry. Uh, I'm Morgan Fine. I'm a product manager at Pivotal, working on Bosch. I have Jim, or James, depending on whatever you want to call him. He responds to both. Uh, who is an engineer on the team also at Pivotal. So today we're going to talk, uh, give a brief Bosch Windows update, since they couldn't make it, but wanted to call out what they've been working on. Things that we've been working on on the Bosch director and stem cell side of the world uh, in the last year or so, where we're planning to go. And then if there's time, let y'all ask us any questions you might have. So our Bosch Windows friends have been spending a lot of time making it easier to create Windows stem cells. Overall, it used to be a pretty extensively manual process. And as you can see from like the top line going across here, they've really been focusing on automating that process and making it easier to get Windows stem cells created with less toil and pain for operators. Uh, they've also been focusing a lot on stem cell security and some other like security plugin type modes. We have another person leaving. And uh, they really said, like, we haven't been super close to them, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them in the Bosch Windows channel or at the Bosch Windows handle in the hashtag Bosch Slack. All right, Jim. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about kind of what we focused on in the past year and you know, what we've done and how that's turned out. So one of the first things that we really focused on in this last year was release cadence and how we release the director and stem cells. So right now for stem cells, we really aim to get releases out every two weeks. So we have this uh, automation build that kicks off and releases a stem cell with the new canonical packages uh, for security and updates. Um, one other really cool thing that we've been doing in stem cells is we've kind of updated our automation around CVE tri triggering and making sure that we're you know, cutting stem cells within a short period of time after CVEs are um, you know, announced. Um, I think the last data I saw earlier this year is we've kind of gotten that down to around two days. Um, no promises there, but it seems to be working quite well. Uh, one of the other things that we've been touching on is the director. So, in the past couple of years, you might have noticed that the director was released about once every four months. Um, we're trying to do that a little bit faster now and get faster feedback, get features out, and kind of get feedback from customers a little more frequently. So we're aiming for it's turning out to be about once a month for the director right now, um, give or take how features kind of land and, and when it's meaningful to cut a release. Um, and then one last thing we've been kind of doing with the director that's a bit unique and uh, different from the past is we started using Semver to kind of indicate a little bit more, little bit more about you know, what each release contains, uh, when it's safe to upgrade, whether or not you should be expecting you know, breaking changes or anything like that. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on when you're upgrading your director. Uh, another thing we wanted to really tackle this year was kind of actually defining what our stem cell support policy is. Um, in the past, it's been kind of nebulous. You know, I think if you asked people in the Slack channel, we might say we support the latest version. You know, um, but now we actually say we support N and N minus one on any given stem cell line, uh, which is currently, I believe, Xenial, and I think there is a CentOS stem cell line, but I don't know how much longer that'll be around. Um, and uh, it's actually official now that we have end of life trusty support. So you know, hopefully everyone's on those Xenial stem cells, but. Those are the current ones, and those are what we're maintaining. So you can always expect to get security and patch updates for any of the um, supported stem cell lines. Uh, some other focuses that we've been doing is uh, we started doing the Bosch PMC meetings uh, monthly now. That's kind of a change from the past year. So hopefully you know, that involves a little bit more of the community and gets updates and, and kind of more collaboration going on in the space. Um, Morgan over here has been doing a really great job trying to uh, do better release notes on each uh, GitHub release that we release so that you know there aren't that many surprises when you're upgrading and you can really know what's coming into it, tie it to you know tracker stories and, and some stuff that's a little more detailed um, and kind of have those expectations. Um, and the other thing that this screenshot is supposed to show is we've been really trying to tackle GitHub responsiveness and kind of be more involved with the community in a lot of ways. Um, and so this 
screenshot shows like our process for how we manage GitHub issues now, which is kind of more built into our day-to-day -day, um, kind of cycle. Um, and I think over the past year, we've gone from, I think it was in like the 400s in the issues down to in the 100s. So we've really been trying to kind of get through those. And I think last time I checked, there was less than 10 pull requests open on the director. So um, we're not perfect. Uh, you know, we might take a while to respond to some issues, but hopefully, you know, if, if you have problems and you open an issue, like uh, either ping us in Slack or hopefully we'll res respond within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, one other big thing that we've been working on is kind of the, you know, um, concept of less surprises for operators. And one of the ways we've done that is in lifecycle commands. So specifically start, stop, recreate, and restart. And so uh, this slide is kind of calling out this situation that actually occurs in real life quite a bit, which is I'm running a Bosch deploy to up to my deployment, and I have five instances. And then what happens when the fourth instance fails, and then I need to recreate an instance in order to you know, get that deploy to succeed. Um, Kind of unintuitively right now, what you'll see happen is it will actually roll back the deployment to the last successful state. So you can't actually, you know, it's, it's almost like a deploy in itself, but it goes backwards while also recreating that instance that you asked it to recreate. Um, from our user interviews, it seems like this is pretty unexpected. I think that makes sense to me too. Like it doesn't seem like this is the behavior that you would want. And so one of the things that we've been focusing on is how can we improve this experience? and what we've come up with is we've added this new no converge flag to um, start, stop, recreate, and restart. Um, and what this does is it kind of gives you this more granular uh, operational control over instances. Uh, it only acts on the instance that you specify on the command line. It doesn't actually touch anything else. Um, and it operates in a way that it deploys to the last successful state for that instance. So if the instance was upgraded as part of a deploy, it won't actually roll it back. It'll keep it in that updated state. So the only way to kind of progress an instance forward or backwards now is through the Bosch deploy, deploy command, not through these lifecycle commands. Um, we're really looking for feedback on this because it was released in a very recent release. I think 270.4 is the first one that truly supports it. Um, so try it out. Let us know how it goes. And we're in the Slack channel if you want to chat about it. Um, because we are looking to kind of make this the default behavior going forward. We want to make sure that, you know, there aren't any more, uh, you know, breakages when people accidentally roll back their entire deployment to an older version. Uh, some other things that we've been focusing on is kind of removing legacy features. Um, and kind of what that means is giving us a better uh, definition of what Bosch does and kind of pruning some of the features that we've implemented in the past or that we used to support. Um, I know we caught a couple people by surprise by removing the V1 style manifests, um, but that has been a big track of work for us because it's kind of giving us the chance to tackle a lot of product debt, but also a lot of code debt. Um, so we've been able to clean up a lot of stuff, make things a little bit more reliable. Um, unfortunately, you can't refer to you know, jobs instead of instance groups anymore, but um, it's been a long time coming. Um, some other things that we've removed is the backup and restore functionality. There used to be these built-in like native jobs in Bosch itself, um, but that's been since replaced by BBR. And so kind of just taking another pass at the director and being like, what is useful? What is actually being used nowadays? And the last one that I think is a good example is um, we used to enable non-TLS connection over NATs because older stem cells didn't support it. So we had to maintain this backwards compatibility window. And you know, we left that in for a couple of years for some reason, but we finally took the chance to kind of clean that up and kind of reduce our product scope. Um, some other things we've been doing is kind of improving our story around data services. Um, the first one that's kind of interesting is dynamic virtual IP allocation. And so the idea behind this is kind of this concept of how do you, what, ha what happens if you have two foundations or two you know, Bosch deployments that are spread across data centers and they need to communicate with each other um, you want them to have these public virtual IPs so that they can address each other. Um, but it gets difficult when you have to manually go, when you have to manually assign them to the instance groups and kind of plan that ahead. And so what this does is it kind of moves this concept into the cloud config, similar to other networks and other kind of allocation things that we have. 
And so now you can define an array of virtual IPs in your cloud config, and Bosch will actually auto-assign those to instances in a reasonable manner so that you can then you know, have a larger scale of these things communicating across um, data centers. Um, another one that we've been uh, looking for feedback on and interested to hear about is this new pre-stop lifecycle hook. Um, and so the idea behind this one is we found that a lot of people were struggling with Drain and its interface, kind of like, one, how do I write a Drain script? I don't know if anyone has actually taken a look at that, but it's very difficult because it has this archaic, like, you can't output anything to standard out except a number, and if you do, it breaks, and like, it's all crazy. Um, so we, we, we kind of threw that away. I mean, it's still supported, but we're, we're taking a new stance on it and saying there's this pre-stop lifecycle hook which has three environment variables that are pretty well defined and documented. They're supposed to indicate kind of the state of the instance in this like update. And so it will tell you things like, is the VM going away? Is the deployment being deleted? Or is nothing being updated? And so the idea there is you can make a little bit more nuanced decisions in your drain script to kind of help the operation of your data service. Um, one such example might be, you know, container schedulers not choosing to drain if their VM isn't being recreated or something like that. Um, one other huge win with the pre-stop lifecycle hook is it's more standard, so it's, it doesn't have this, like, dynamic draining kind of interface. It's just if it exits one, that's failure. If it exits zero, it's success. Um, so it's much more standard. Uh, another thing we tackled this year was kind of taking a look at HA Bosch and what that means. Um, I think this one was surprising for me because I kind of went in being like, wow, H.A. Bosch, that sounds awesome. Um, but after talking with a lot of customers and teams, like we actually found that the director as it stands kind of meets the SLO requirements. Um, and the operational complexity of managing an H.A. Bosch director was too much risk for what you would get out of the reward. Um, the real question is like, if you don't have Bosch, what is managing your director? It was super confusing. Um, so at this point, it seems like um, that's something we're tabling for the current time, and we're preferring to rely on BBR and some IaaS-specific uh, restoration processes to ensure that you can restore your director quickly, but maybe not um, have it be always operational. Um, this is an open question, though, because we do see this as kind of like an increasing reliance on Bosch from some data services, and like, you know, with CFCR and stuff, people are spinning up KS clusters, and they're kind of envisioning this world of like uh, Bosch deployments happening a little bit more on demand by uh, customer, or not by customers, but by end users. Um, and so, it's still an open question. I wouldn't say we've kind of shut the door completely on this, but uh, that's where we stood in the past year. Uh, now Morgan can talk about upcoming things. Yep. Also appreciate the uh, Escher, who is Dutch, reference in the meme. It's really good if you have a chance. Went there yesterday. Uh, so one of the other things, kind of like Jim was talking about, is we've really been focusing a lot on improving the ways that we need to support Bosch. And like Bosch is a historic and probably one of the longest running projects in the CF Foundation which means there's a lot of rough edges and older things that either are no longer needed or people are using and we don't necessarily understand how or why. So we've really been taking this as a chance, similar to some of like the V1 manifests, to go back, look what's out there, what sorts of things we've gotten feedback on or haven't seen much usage in the community, and trying to address these things to make the team more efficient and just easier to support the product. Uh, that also means that one of the things the team does, like Jim said, with stem cell publishing, um, one of the big things, unfortunately, is with this, there's quite a lot of pipelines that need to run, and these pipelines are running pretty frequently, at least every two weeks. And so, unfortunately, right now, there's a lot of babysitting that happens by one of the engineers on the team to make sure those pipelines go through and everything gets done quickly. So the team's really been taking time to look and see where can we make it faster, how can we make it even more automated with less flakes and less errors where someone needs to get involved. And then the other half, which we're about to tackle, which is really cool, uh, we often get a question, hey, when did this CVE get addressed? When was this thing bumped? When did this kernel patch go out? And so we're also working on automating release notes for the stem cells so that those are more discoverable and self-service on the GitHub release notes. And then the last thing in terms of kind of where we're thinking ahead 
is we often get questions of, hey, can someone explain this product feature or this random workflow? Or when I do something, like what is expected? So Bosch.io is there. A lot of people know about it. A lot of people also, unfortunately, go straight to the team because in the past we haven't done a great job of updating the docs. So we're focusing on really making sure Bosch.io is accurate to the state of the world and trying to see, hey, can you read this first? If you still have questions, let us know. And making sure Bosch.io becomes the source of truth for how to use the product. Uh, and then lastly is Bosch, like by and large, really is a mature product. I think it's done a great job finding like product market fit. And um, the issue though is that there are these rough edges and we're really trying to make sure that instead of it having brand new, like expanding the functionality and everything it supports, seeing if we can make these rough edges smoother and make the product easier, faster, better overall. Uh, so from that side, one of the big things is kind of like what Jim said with the start, stop, recreate, and like those commands not quite working the way people expect. We really want to make sure that people are able to do what they're trying to do, and it's obvious and intuitive that here, this is what's going to happen when you do something. Uh, I think a good one that our friends over at SAP are working on is some of the resurrection things. We often see people wanting to turn off the resurrector for a specific deployment rather than the global on-off flag. They need to do maintenance. They don't want to turn it off entirely. But currently, there's just Bosch update resurrection on or off. And then you have no way of knowing if it's on or off without running the command again to make sure it's in the state you want. So we're trying to figure out what the best workflow through that sort of a thing is and see if there's ways to just make that simpler and easier for people to use. Uh, another one which similar is unexpected updates in deploys. I think a common thing is, hey, there's no manifest diff. It didn't show any deltas in the manifest. And then every, yep, every instance gets updated what happened. We've been doing a lot to focus on that, and we're really trying to figure out what's causing those things. So if people keep seeing those, please let us know. It is something we're actively focusing on, but it's really hard to know what rough edges there still are without just operational like use cases of people doing this in production and in the real world. So definitely reach out as you see those things. And then the last one which we're about to pick up is this thing where Bosch upload release can, uh, sorry, if you use Bosch deploy and you include releases in the manifest, Bosch will actually upload releases in parallel. We're starting to also see a lot of people using compiled releases because they're faster. But you can't include the same compiled release for Windows and Linux or two different operating systems in the same release because of the way, like, you can only have one type of release in the manifest. So we're about to add some support so you can merge these releases together and get the benefits of multiple compiled releases for different operating systems, but also take advantage of the parallel upload releasing in the deployment manifest. So look forward to that hopefully in a few months once the next director in stem cells and CLIs come out with that. Uh, as always, security is a focus and an improvement. Uh, one of the big things which we're seeing our Cred Hub team work on and to, to tackle is how to make cert rotation easier and easier. A lot of the things are already possible in Bosch, but there could be ways to make it easier or make the Cred Hub experience and control of this easier. And so we're starting to look into what sorts of endpoints and things can we make so that this whole end-to-end -end workflow for cert rotation is simpler and easier. Uh, and then similarly, we're picking up a track of work to remove this number of credentials that are available on a Bosch deployed VM. One of the ones are the blob store credentials where you upload packages or upload logs. And so we're about to try to remove those and change the interface between the Bosch agent and the VMs to reduce the number of control, number of credentials that are on the VMs and reduce the attack vectors that could be happening. Another one which uh, we often hear questions about is like, hey, I have a director. This is slow. Should I scale up? Unfortunately, our current recommendation is often to scale up and see if it fixes the problem. There's a lot of metrics that can be exposed and that different plugins and add-ons expose. But a lot of these things aren't available for the director itself right now. So we're working with some of the metrics teams and other parts of the foundation to try to make sure that the questions that operators have and the things that they're pro encountering can be answered through the metrics that the director is exposing. Uh, I think the most common one is like how many tasks are queued, 
how big is my task queue, how many workers do I have, how many threads are in flight, and things like that. All metrics we're hoping to expose into the firehose and going forward. That way we can actually recommend, hey, if you're seeing this thing and using indicator protocols, see things start to get exposed more easily. Um, and then lastly, I think the big thing that you'll probably hear a lot this week is Kate's it's happening. Uh, there's a lot of talk of how do Kate's and Bosch play together. One of the big things, of course, is CFCR is the default way to deploy Kubernetes using Bosch. Um, Irene, of course, is Kubernetes for PaaS, or serve, sorry, CFAR. And how can we start to push a lot of the like evolution of these different Cloud Foundry components onto Kubernetes and being run on Kubernetes? Uh, so I think one of the things we're doing is we're working really closely with the CFCR team and trying to understand what are the deltas, how can we improve making it easier for the different teams in the foundation to develop and contribute to both Bosch and Kubernetes, and how can we help merge that gap to make that adoption and push towards Kubernetes easier. I think there's a lot of openness and unknowns in that, and so we're definitely looking to have ideas and conversations, but nothing super concrete in terms of what that actually means yet. I think with that, this was like riding off into the sunset, uh, but I guess it's the first talk of the track. So enjoy your rest of your conferences. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to find us. I think we have office hours tomorrow at 2. So yeah, thanks, everyone. <laughs>